What is going on guys, in today's video I will show you the best endgame, wand and longbow build in Throne and Liberty. So in this guide I will show you a fully max setup with the best possible tier 1 gear, traits, masteries, skill rotations and everything else. And the best part about this is that for every single build choice I will explain my reasons, also how and where to get this powerful gear. And just overall you will be able to see what a fully maxed tier 1 character will look like and what at the end game you can achieve as well. So if you want to use the best build in the game, then let's get right into it. The setup is great for party wide buffs in the form of cooldown reduction, mana regen, critical hits and accuracy. This is a very versatile healer build because you can heal while also do a lot of DPS. As our weapon combination has strong buffs and more spammable skills, so this makes her preferred when doing any type of group PvE. If you enjoy traditional ranged builds but also want to heal and support your allies then this is the one for you. So let's move over to the build. For the choice of weapons we are going with the wand and the longbow. And first of all we have our skills. So for defensive skill we use the chaotic shield. While for active skills we get the touch of despair, deadly marker, decisive sniping, time for punishment, fountain of life, curse explosion, swift healing, corrupted magic circle, clay salvation, strafing, zephyr snack and nature's blessing. As you can see from the gameplay I don't have all of these same skill icons on my bar. It is because the skill icons will change depending on our specialization setup and for our build only one skill will change. So corrupted magic circle will turn into decaying touch. Then for passives we want to go with devotion and emptiness. Noble Revival, Selfless Soul, Brad's Beacon, Earth's Blessing, Raxi's Arrowhead, Sniper's Sense and Vampiric Contract. As for skill upgrade priority, for active skills we mainly want to focus on Swift Healing, Clay Salvation, Nature's Blessing, Touch of Despair, Curse Explosion, Corrupted Magic Circle and Time for Punishment. While for passive skills we focus on the Brad's Beacon, Earth's Blessing, Devotion and Emptiness, Vampiric Contract and the Sniper's Sense. And then for the rest of your skills they're not as important, so just upgrade them as you progress through the game. Also remember to always upgrade all of your skills to blue first before moving on to the purple. Next we have skill specialization and for Touch of Despair select the effect duration. Then for Decisive Sniping get the charging time. Then for Fountain of Life get all of these. So Mana Recovery, Radius Increased and Effect Duration. Then for Swift Healing get the Healing Transfer and Consecutive Use. For Clay Salvation don't get anything. Then for Zephyr Snack get the Damage Increase. Then for Deadly Marker don't get anything. Then in Time for Punishment select the Effect Duration. Then for Curse Explosion get all 3. So Dark Explosion, Damage Increase and Focus Target. Then for Corrupted Magic Circle get Decaying Touch and Additional Damage. Then for Strafing get the Gale and Consecutive Use. And finally for Nature's Blessing don't get anything. Next we have the Weapon Mastery. And this is how it should look like for the Wand. So take a look at the middle and get everything. And then now go to the top and select everything from the damage node until the regenerative meditation. And then again this is how it should look like for the longbow. You start in the middle and get everything from the harmonious mind until the gale arrowhead. And then again go to the bottom and get that entire row. Next let's take a look at our gear. And if you are looking for a full green or blue gear setup then I recommend for you to watch my previous build videos. So first off we are using the Toblex Deathmark Longbow with traits like the hit chance, heavy attack chance and critical hit chance. All gear should be at its max level and you can get it from the Tyrant's Isle. Next we have the Lacurious Coveted Tome with hit chance, heavy attack chance and critical hit chance. You can get it from the Cave of Destruction. Next we have the Swirling Essence Hat with max health, melee evasion and cooldown speed. You can get it by defeating the Avolus Hydromancer or by opening all kinds of purple armor chests. Next we have the Supreme Devotion with mana region, skill damage resistance and debuff duration. You can get it from the Cave of Destruction. Next we have the Phantom Wolf Tunic with max health, ranged evasion and buff duration. You can get it from the Tyrant's Isle. Next we have the Ascendant Guardian Gloves with max mana, melee evasion and added attack speed. As we are using two pieces of the Transcendent One set, so we will get additional 7.6% cooldown speed, and you can get it from the Butcher's Canyon. 
Next we have the breaches of the Executioner, with magic evasion, ranged evasion and the buff duration. You can get it by defeating the Abyssal Spectre. Next we have the Ascendant Guardian Shoes, with max mana, mana regen and melee evasion. You can get it by defeating the Demon Hoof Shaman. Next up we have the Clasp of the Conqueror, with max health, skill damage boost and buff duration. You can only get it by opening purple accessory chests. Next we have Braces of the Primal King, with max health, skill damage resistance and debuff duration. You can get it from the Cave of Destruction. Next we have the Abyssal Grace Band, with mana regen, skill damage boost and buff duration. You can get it from the Death's Abyss. Next we have the Sapphire Dimensional Band, with max health, skill damage boost and buff duration. You can only get it from purple armor chests. And finally we have the Belt of the Endless Slaughter, with max health, skill damage resistance and debuff duration. You can get it from the Butcher's Canyon. Last but not least, if at this current moment you only have blue gear then don't worry, because that gear doesn't really matter, and you will soon enough start changing it for the purple pieces. The setup that I showed is the best current gear that anyone can farm, but no matter what gear you choose, this build will still work fine, but its setup is just an example of what the best of the best items will look like. Next up, let's take a look at our gear upgrades. This game doesn't have a very typical gear progression, so by this I mean that, that you will have to upgrade pretty much anything you get. So you'll go from grey to green to blue and finally to purple. No matter at which stage of progression you're watching this video, just keep upgrading your equipment to their max level. And then when you get better gear, just transfer the experience from the old one to the new one. As for my gear recommendations, when you reach level 50, just farm accessible gear by doing open world dungeons. Also, you want to extract traits from gear for Lucent. On top of that, you will need to turn important purple gear into the lithographs and then sell them on the auction house. Last but not least, for your traits, just prioritize the ones that give you the highest damage. And don't forget that you can acquire new traits by using the trait unlock stone. Next up we have the stats and depending on your gear you should adjust them accordingly. The goal for your endgame build is to reach 30 strength, 30 dexterity, 50 wisdom and 40 perception. All of these milestones will give us extremely high damage and healing capabilities. Next we have our guardian choice and this creature is a special transformation that can add offensive or defensive buffs to your character for 30 seconds. And for our build we have the two best choices. So the first one is the Lady Knight Kamarshia. This guardian lowers your cooldowns while also giving you a damage shield equal to 50% of your maximum mana. This is a very strong defensive guardian whenever you're struggling to survive. Or then the other option is the Shade Revenant Steno. This guardian launches projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack. Since our build is great at range, so this guy works perfectly for our playstyle. And now finally we have come to the gameplay. And at the start I will show you two different combos for healing and then we will move over to the DPS rotation. So first off we have the best AOV healing combo in which we use the clay salvation, then fountain of life and then we finish it off with the nature's blessing. These are your main AOV healing abilities. I usually use this combo after multiple party members have taken damage and this will heal them up super quickly. And then second of all we have our single target combo, in which we simply use the swift healing 3 times. This is our main heal, that has very low cooldown and can be cast up to 3 times. So pretty much your main objective is just to keep using the skill while doing as much DPS as possible. And then once in a while when multiple teammates take damage, then use the AOV combo. And then lastly for our main DPS rotation, we want to use the touch of despair, then the time for punishment, then the king touch again, then touch of despair, then Zephyr's knock, and then we finish it off with a curse explosion. And now from here we just rinse and repeat. In this rotation we always start the fight with the touch of despair, because our goal is to stack 3 curses on the boss before detonating our curse explosion. We also want to cast the King Touch before our third Touch of Despair. This will help us to maximize our curse damage. And then from here we just simply use the rest of our DPS skills. This combo is great for high damage, but remember to always focus on healing combos first, before even thinking about doing this DPS rotation. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe and comment. If you are interested in more content then check out my channel and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace.